Hey everybody, Mr. Murray here, Mr. Murray's Mathland, taking a look at another uh, optimization problem here. And in this problem, we are trying to find the rectangle of maximum area that can be inscribed in a right triangle with legs of length 3 and 4 if the sides of the rectangle are parallel to the legs of the triangle. So, you know, not twisting the rectangle sideways or anything. So, um, as always, we're trying to uh, determine some kind of optimization and in this case it's a maximum area so that's what I need to make an equation for so I can use some calculus on it. If I want to maximize area I need an equation for the area. So the equation of the area of a rectangle is you know length times width, base times height, whatever you want to call it and so for this one, I'm just going to start with calling those x and y. And this is a pretty common thing with, with a lot of these optimization problems. you got two variables here, and you want to use some kind of a secondary condition to solve for one variable and replace it. So this one is not uh, immediately obvious, like some of the fencing types of problems. So we're going to look around here, and we're going to get a little clever with the fact that it's inscribed in this larger rectangle. Somehow that's got to come into play, this 3 and the 4. And so what you've done is you've really broken it up into, you've got three right triangles. You've got the big right triangle, and you've got this small little right triangle here on the, the lower left, and you've got this big right triangle, you know, sort of a medium-sized one right here sitting on top of the rectangle. And so you really just want to, uh, set up some kind of uh, proportion because all three of these right triangles are similar. You know, in case you're uh, going back to your days of geometry, you know, those angles are congruent. All three uh, triangles have those angles and the right angles. So by AA, they're all similar. So they all have proportional sides. So focus on one of them. Uh, I'm going to focus on this one in the upper. Uh, upper, you know, on top of the rectangle. And the bottom of that triangle is x, you know, the opposite side of the rectangle. And the uh, sort of height or the, the altitude of this one is 4 minus y. And so now I have something to compare it to. So in the, you know, the small triangle on top there, I have, I could set up a proportion 4 minus y is to x. 4 minus y is to x as in the big triangle 4 is to 3. And there's a relationship uh, and, and from now you can solve it for x or y and then substitute it into your area function you're trying to maximize. So I'm going to cross multiply so I'll have 4x equals 12 minus 3y and it seems pretty prime to solve for x right here. So I'll have x is equal to 3 minus 3 quarters y. And so I'm going to take this and substitute it into my area function. I'm going to take out x, replace with 3 minus 3 quarters y times y. I just as easily could have solved for y, by the way, and put this all in terms of x. And so if I, I think it's nice to simplify if it doesn't seem to be, you know, a lot of work, a lot of unnecessary work. Sometimes it's just nice to see that. And I'm going to do this derivative by hand. That's, that's, you know, sometimes they're easier to do on the calculator. This seems like a pretty easy one to do with just the power rule. So a prime is 3 minus 2 times that's going to be 3 halves y. And as always, I'm going to get my critical numbers by setting that equal to zero. Also, uh, I would think when it's undefined, but this is never undefined. So we're solving when does 3 halves y equal 3. So multiply both sides by 2 thirds. And you've got y is equal to 2. There's my solution. Is it in fact a critical number that yields a maximum? Remember, that's what you're after. There are these kind of false problems here where the critical number you get will be a minimum instead of a maximum or, or whatever you're expecting. So um, always check, make sure. 
So if I plug in something less than two into the derivative, if I plug in one, that is definitely going to be a positive quantity, and which tells me the area is increasing prior to that. And when I plug in three or something bigger into the derivative, then I'm going to get a negative for a prime, <clears throat> which tells me a is decreasing after that, which tells me I've got a relative max, which is just what I wanted at two. That's what I was hoping. And so the question says, find the rectangle of maximum area. It's a little vaguely worded, so I'm going to say they mean the dimensions of the rectangle with the maximum area. And so the rectangle's dimensions are x and y. x I already found. No, y I already found. y is 2. And x is 3 minus 3 quarters of y. Now that I know y is 2, I can plug that in there. And so it's 3 minus 3 halves. 3 minus 1 and a half will give you 3 halves. So there we go. We've got a uh, 2 by 3 halves rectangle, however you want to say that. And if they wanted the maximum area, you could just do 2 times 3 halves, get the actual area right there. Boom, it'd be 3. Okay, kids. So uh, the cool thing there, I think, was the similar triangles set up to, to help you get that secondary condition. That, that wasn't obvious, I don't think. So always look around, use everything at your disposal, old geometry properties, things like that. And as always, if you have any questions, just let me know.